Greetings my lovelies, hello it's Emmy. welcome back. Today I'm going to be making a giant Oreo cake, but it's going to be a seasonal take on it. Number one being this, which I tasted in my live Oreo tasting, and this is the limited edition apple pie Oreo. And so this will contain this filling inside of my giant Oreo version. And the second apple pie part will be in the cake. The cake will actually contain a whole apple pie. So the two layers of the Oreo cake will each have an apple pie inside it. And that was inspired by Charles Phoenix's chair pumple cake. Now, if you haven't seen the chair pumple, it's amazing. Basically, it's a three layered cake and each layer of cake contains a pie, a cherry pie, a pumpkin pie, and an apple pie, all stacked up on top of each other and frosted like a cake so that when you cut it, there are three pies inside it. If you want to see me attempt it, let me know in the comments down below. So I've already prepped my cakes. So let me walk you through what I did there. So the first thing I did was I mixed up a box cake mix. I prepared it exactly as instructed on the back here. So I added the cake mix, the eggs, the vegetable oil, and the water. Mix that all up. And then I used these silicone pans and I sprayed these really well with baking spray. Then I took about a cup and a half of the cake batter and pour that into the bottom of the greased mold. And then I took my pies. I bought these from the bakery section at my local supermarket because they were the thinnest pies I could find. If you're using a frozen pie, you wanna bake it as instructed and wait for it to completely cool before you place it inside the cake. Okay, so next we're gonna take our pie. We're going to invert it, slide it into our layer of cake batter squish it down, and then we're gonna add another cup or so of cake batter on top of that. Then do that with the second half, and then bake this as instructed. Place it in an oven at 350 degrees for about 25 to 28 minutes, or until a toothpick comes out clean. Then we take our cakes out, we're gonna let them cool on a rack for about 10 or 15 minutes, then taking a serrated bread knife, we're gonna even them out a little bit, cut the top off. And then we're gonna take them out of the mold and let them cool completely before we add our icing layer. And now I'm gonna make the filling. So what I've done here is I've taken an entire pack of apple pie Oreos and I've opened them up and I've removed the filling on the inside. I'm gonna combine some store-bought frosting with my Oreo filling. Mmm, smells like frosting. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the entire jar here and we're gonna combine the apple pie mix. Okay. Looks kind of like peanut butter, but it doesn't smell like peanut butter. No, it doesn't. It smells like a craft store. Okay. I said craft store, not crap store, as in the place where you buy pom poms and glitter. All right. Come on, it's together. Arr. I probably should have used a bigger bowl. Uh, that's all right. There is our filling. Now let us assemble the cake. I've got myself a cake stand. All right, get my hair out of my face. <laughs> Place your cake stand on top of this. Quickly flip it. Now we're gonna generously slather our filling right on top of that. Boom, boom, boom. Now we're gonna take our offset spatula and smear this. Now, if you were pro, you'd probably be piping this, but I'm not pro. Not at all. Boy, that's a lot of frosting. Um, I didn't tell you to go over there. Yeah, that's looking pretty even. So, I'm gonna use two spatulas on top. Yes! <laughs> it's a little off center. But you know what? Not pro, right? Except I want to be pro. Okay, come on. All right, all right. And there is the giant and very heavy apple pie Oreo cake. Isn't it magnificent? All right, we've come to the moment I've been waiting for. I want to cut into this and see my pies hiding inside. I want to make sure I have a very sharp knife. readily. All right. <laughs>
apple pie inside of a cake. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> I'm so glad that this worked. I thought of many different ways of doing this. I actually thought of doing small home run pies instead of an entire pie because I knew that entire pie would be a little bit too thick, but I decided to try it anyways because this cutaway is so much more impressive with a whole pie as opposed to two small pies. So yay. And here is the pie or cake, pake, and it is falling under its own weight. Let's get a bite with everything. Cake, pie crust, frosting, second pie. Do you like them all? <laughs> Boy, howdy. Is that ever sweet? It's pretty tasty though. So that bite tastes just like apple pie. Cinnamon, sweet, a little crunch of cooked apple. And then of course you've got the frosting that we put in there too, which gives it an injection, a large injection of kind of the artificial apple flavor. But since we cut it with the frosting, it's not as perfumey and as strong as when you have the Oreo cookie itself. I didn't like that at all. It had a really lasting floral, perfumey, scented candle flavor to it. It's here, but it's not as persistent. I like that much better. Let's get a bite on this end here, which is more cake. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's a very different experience. That's cake and frosting with a little bit of pie crust, which you get in terms of texture, but not much flavor. Now let's try a middle piece. I think this part is going to be the best bite right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this transitional section right here is the best because you get a little bit of the cake, you get a little of the pie. It's not just all pie filling and it's not all just cake. It definitely feels most Frankensteinish right, right there. This is a really fun dessert. I think it would be really great to feed a crowd. There's so much dessert here and you don't necessarily need the Oreo outside at all. You could just do this with two cake pans, of course. I've only baked with silicone molds a couple of times and both times I feel like it imparted a little bit of that silicone plastic flavor to the cake, at least right on the surface where the cake batter touched the mold. The first time was when I made a giant peanut butter and jelly sandwich cake, and this time, both times, I feel like there's a little bit of kind of a rubbery taste. Perhaps it's my imagination, but I don't know how else I would have gotten such a complicated shape otherwise without using silicone. So there you have it, a giant apple pie Oreo cake. Let me know in the comments if there are any other recipes that you'd like me to try out or if you wanna see a chair pumple. Oh, as you might've noticed, I finally got some shirts made. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in getting one for yourself. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media so you can get little teasers about what to expect in future videos. And I shall see you in my next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye.